Did you bring the water bucket? Toting a bucket of water was Dick Campbell's job when he lived on West Huron Island during the late 1930s. Today, 75 years since he first set foot on the remote Lake Superior Island, he's back to see the lighthouse that his father cared for until 1944. The island is made of solid granite. Even the glaciers could barely scratch it, so drilling for fresh water was impossible. No pump of that era could lift liquid to the summit, and the safest route to lake water was a quarter-mile run to the boathouse. Water was a, quite a problem because uh, there was no running water up here or at the fog signal at the other end of the island. So we had to carry all of the water. We carried in buckets. Anybody that went down the hill near the lake automatically had to take a couple of buckets and bring back water. And sometimes it was quite embarrassing in the middle of a warm night to get up and find the water pail empty and someone forgot to bring water. And that didn't go over very big. So we had to do it for cooking, for everything. And that was, it created quite a problem for my mother because when you try to cook for one thing or do any washing or anything, you don't realize how important water is. Huron Island Lighthouse was built in 1868, just eight years after the sidewheel steamer Arctic ran into the island in thick fog. The need for navigational help was obvious, but it would take another decade before funding would bring a fog signal to the island. Campbell, who explored all eight of the islands during summer vacations at the light, remembers seeing pieces of the Arctic in shallow water. I noticed early on that there were some uh, timbers of shipwreck, but back then I was too young to really realize much about it. And for some reason, these keepers didn't talk about shipwrecks very often. So I, it was kind of a lost cause, but I, do, I did know that that's what it was from because there's no way you could have timbers stuck in these big boulders around here and like that unless they were from a shipwreck of some sort. Dick's father was assistant keeper and his family lived in a home adjacent to the light. The home was abandoned when the Coast Guard took command of the station, moving operations to a new barracks near the Fog Signal Building. In 1972, the barracks were abandoned and eventually the island chain became a protected bird habitat. Dick's interest in shipwrecks led him to a storied diving career that included co-discovery of many shipwrecks near Whitefish Point and Alpena, Michigan. Dick was also one of the first to visit the Cedarville after it sank in a collision in 1966. I happen to know this guy very well. It was the watchman. He stood by in a launch to make sure no one went near it. But anyway, that day I, I went out with my own boat and I, I made a dive on the Cedarville the next day. And that was quite interesting because all it was was a lot of whole lot of bubbles coming out of there and it, it didn't amount to much.